Hello and welcome to new episode of Microsoft Fabric series and in today's video we are going to discuss how can we create field parameter using calculated tables. Yes, using the DAX calculated table we will try to create field parameter. It is not going to be a simple journey and in this journey we need help from SQL Server Management Studio. We also need XMLA endpoint which is enabled and we need help from a model where field parameter is already working. So let's jump onto the app.powerbi.com and I will show you the settings which you need. So first of all, we need a setting where XMLA endpoint is enabled and it is in read write mode. To do that, I am here on app.powerbi.com and here I'll click on setting and in setting, I'll go to admin portal. Inside the admin portal, under the tanning setting, I will first of all search XMLA and Allow XMLA endpoints to analyze in Excel with on-premise semantic models. This should be on. So XMLA endpoint should be enabled. Let's check is there any other XMLA endpoint? No. So this setting should be on. Now second is you have to go to your capacity setting. And these settings need to be enabled by your admin. If you are not the admin of Power BI and the capacity, then you will not be able to do these settings. So please make sure your admin enables these settings. Now go to the fabric capacity and in my case, I'm using the trial capacity. So I'll go to the trial capacity and in the trial capacity, I'll click on my own capacity and then I'll open the Power BI workloads and inside the Power BI workload, I have to make sure XMLA and point is read write. If these settings are there, it means now you can open your semantic model on tabular editor 3 for modification, SQL Server Management Studio for a modification. It means you can use any tool which support XMLA endpoint. So first of all, let me show you a working example on my Microsoft Fabric semantic model. I came on another tab and in this tab, I click on workspaces and open J10 Fabric workspace. This is the same workspace where I've shown you how to create tax calculated table. So here, if you remember, we had this semantic model, which I already filtered out using the filter option, which is calculation group where we have created the calculated tax table. So I clicked on that. It opened the semantic model UI for me. And in that one, I have to open the data model. So semantic model I have opened and inside that I opened the data model. Now in this data model, if you see here, I have created this axis and axis two. Access to which is something which I'm going to delete right now and we are going to create it again. Now before we go ahead and do that, let's check out is this field parameter code is working or not. If you are familiar with the field parameter code, this is the code which we typically get in the table and this is what gives us a field parameter. And field parameter for those of you who don't know, field parameter helps us in creating dynamic axes and dynamic majors or dynamic dimensions and dynamic value axes. So for that, let me start creating a new report click on a new report it opens up and then let me bring in access here on the visualization area also let me bring in access and create a slicer for that so as you can see on the left hand side visual it is already loaded brand category city it means it has already created it as an access and now i can add a major and i would be able to analyze this now only thing is i need a slicer so let me let me delete this and add it again so let me add a slicer and inside the slicer, let me add access. Now I got my access. Let me click on brand. It is showing my brand category. It is showing my category state. It is showing my state city. It is showing my. And we also try to add a few more majors and see if they're working properly. Seems like. Now let's look at by creating a call cluster column chart. Now click on the table visual and create a cluster column chart. Is it still working? Seems like it is still working. Okay, fine. So we have a working field parameters with us in a Microsoft Fabric semantic model. We want to replicate that stuff. Now, first of all, what I have done is how do I, how do I start it? I taken an import mode file and this is my file uh, which I've taken and here I already have this access. Now, this file is very similar. The table names are very similar. The column names are very similar. The only difference is this subcategory, which is not having space there, but having a space here. So this is the code which I have and this is the same code I want to take and paste it there to create a table. So let me copy this code and go to my semantic model, the calc group semantic model and try to create a DAX calculated table. So let me click on the new table. And in this new table, I'll paste the code which I got from the import mode. So, and I'll rename it as access to now subcategory. I don't have a space here. So let me remove this. Now let me press enter. 
it created a table access two, but you will see a difference that access one is having access access field access order, but access two has values values two values three. Now here, if you go here, you don't see much of the things which you can do out here. You can't control it. Like if I go to advanced, it is import mode. I go to advanced, it is import mode. Nothing which I can do much. But can we check? Is it working on the report? Maybe it is working. We go to the report and we refresh this, and now we are able to see the access two. Let me drag access to on a new page. If I drag this value column, it is not behaving the way we want it. And if I drag any of the major like cogs, it is again not behaving as expected. Now here comes the role of SQL Server Management Studio. But before I jump onto that and tell you the next steps, I want to give you a warning that please don't do directly it on your production models. Create a copy of your production semantic models and then do it there and then you can migrate it back. And ALM Toolkit can help you in that. So use ALM Toolkit, create a copy of it, do it there. If it works, if it is perfectly working fine on that particular semantic model, then migrate the field parameter back. In that manner, you can achieve, but don't directly play around with your production models. Do it only on your development models and those two which are not critical. Now with that, let me tell you first of all what you need to do. You need to publish this file. While there are ways and means you can do it without publishing, but if you publish it, you will have the same way to access both the semantic models. So I published it already into a field parameter workspace. Now I am ready with my SQL Server Management Studio. And in SQL Server Management Studio, I need to open this semantic model. And to open that, I need to again go back to the app.powerbi.com, open the workspace. And in that workspace, field parameters, from the field parameters, Go to workspace settings, go to license info and in the license info you will get the URL. I'll tell you one more place where URL is there. I copied it. I'll go back to the SQL Server Management Studio, create a new connection. The connection which you have to create is analysis services. Paste your URL, use Microsoft Entra with MFA, give your email ID and then press on connect. It will bring you a pop-up to take your password or the code if needed, otherwise it will open. Now once this is open, you open the database and in my case, I only have one such semantic model. You might have multiple, if you have multiple, open the one where you have the field parameters, open the tables, right click on the field parameter table, script as create or replace in new query window. This is the only role this has. We are going to copy paste this script on a notepad. I am using notepad++, plus plus. there I am pasting this script. And if you want some kind of encoding, you can use JSON. The language you can use JSON. So that you will be able to see it better. Now, the role of this model is finished. We can minimize it. Now, let's go back again to the Power BI service. Now, in the Power BI service now, I'll go to the semantic model, the calculation group. I'll, now, I'll tell you from where you can take the URL. So, that's the second option which I wanted to tell you. So, click on the model, scroll up, click on the semantic model and here you get the URL. Copy this. Now go back here and connect this. Now my advice would be close the older one. Just for my reference, I kept it open, but my advice would be close this. Click on connect, give this URL and do the same process of logging in. It will also open up. Now here I have more than one semantic model. So in this database, you will see multiple semantic models. Carefully open the semantic model which you want to, to modify. Open the table. Right click on the field parameter you wanted to change. Right click on access to in this case. Create script table as create or replace in a new query window. This is the script I want to change. Now what I'm going to do here is basically, I'm going to make that this thing side by side. Let me one thing. I'm not going to use this script. I'm not just going to copy a few things from this script to the next. So this is my script and let me on the side open the others. Now both the scripts are open side by side. You can see the difference, the database name we need to change. So I'm going to copy paste it from here to here. Table name access to, I'm going to change access to. So what I'm doing, I'm using the older code. I'm only changing the things which are there. Again, the table name access to. Now these are, there are four tags which I know need to copy the lineage tag. I'm going to copy it from the current semantic model which I wanted to modify, the calculation group. From there, I'm copying it. I copied this lineage tag. And once it happened that the lineage tag was not working, so I end up deleting it. So first of all, I'm copying the lineage tags. And please remember, this is value one and I'm pasting it into the value one only. Then I go down, I copy the another lineage tag also. This is value two. I go to value two and paste it. I'll go down. I'm not disturbing the code in between right now, but I'll go down and use this also. Now, ideally speaking, in case we see there is a difference, this is what I most of the time done, uh, done as I actually copied this expression as is there. Okay. I have not kept the one which is came here. All the three times I've done it. Now again, the partition name need to be access to. A mode is import, a table type calculated. All these things should be same. And let's leave rest of the things. Our tags are matching. Now this is the code which I need. So I'm going to now copy the code in the notepad and replace it with the code which is there in the SQL Server Studio. 
remove anything which is additional and now we are going to run it if it runs with any of the problems we need to again go back and correct it so now let me run it if it runs without error that is what we wanted if there are errors like once i got lineage check error i have to remove that now it has run successfully the query actually has run successfully for me without any issue now you can go back to your model now you go to your tabular model here now you can refresh it you can refresh your semantic model and now you see there is a difference here you can see axis fields and order y now still this might not work i'll tell you why it will not work so let's go back here and remove this old visual refresh your model refresh click here refresh and drag axis to now sometime what happens it it gives the error the data is not loaded in that case you have to go and refresh your model and that is why i was saying it might not work but it has worked in this case so well and good so bring the stable in create a new slicer now get this slicer in here and now you can click on brand category sub category and they are changing here now let's bring in cogs let's bring in gross and these are some of the values you have seen with me in the past and they are correct and let's select two of them it is working category sub category brand now in this manner you are able to get your field parameters working using calculated table sql server management studio at xml endpoint now sometime if it doesn't work it gives you error the values are not refresh or the table have some problem maybe because you tried to experiment little bit more so when you come to the table it happened with me like sometime i just not copy pasted the code from the from the calculation group file to the notepad and there was a space in the sub category it does allow him to correct that here itself now another time it doesn't load the data so in that case what we can do is we can go to the semantic model and we can refresh it so you can come to the workspace and refresh it or you can come to the workspace open the semantic model and here you can refresh it and once you refresh that error should go so if there is a data error it should go with refresh if there is some column error as long as it is detected as a correct table you should be able to correct these columns and add some column manually now here we don't have an option to create field parameters of now which it should come very soon and we we don't have to need this kind of work around but i told you this one work there could be many other ways the work around could be there if you remember when uh, fabric was at very initial stage gainer cube has shown in a video how can you make field parameters working now in that manner there was little bit of coding exercise required uh, that was the same coding to change some of these things now here what we have done is we have went ahead and manually changed those things but again my advice don't do it on your production models use alm toolkit create a copy of the model and in that model experiment out check it out for a couple of days if it is working fine then again use the alm toolkit and migrate only this table part in this manner you should be able to create field parameter and make it working i am continuing to experiment on this feature you also go ahead and experiment and let me know what else you are able to do using this new feature of calculated table and calculated column we don't want to create calculated tables uh, because we should always create a central model where the, our table should be there like our date table or any other table which we want to create they all should be part of our model in the warehouse or in the lake house tax calculated table is not the place where you should create the table now calculated column also right now it is only supported on tax table or semantic model tables like calculation group or field parameters and we should limit ourselves to use these new tax calculated column only to these tables to enhance the visual experience now calculation group field parameter in as the visual experience gives you flexibility to in dynamic visuals and that is where we should focus on using these calculated table not to cover up the mistakes we have done in our model creation in lake houses or warehouse So remember these few key thumb rules and go ahead and try out these features and do let me know what all ways you find out to make these things working. Hope you like this video. Do let me know your views in the comments. Thanks for watching this video. Thank you.